we have one CSV file and let's imagine we receive this file periodically. In fact, this file that I'm using, it's a file that I found online, available online. It's about cameras, has information about cameras. But let's imagine we work at a place where we have access to a similar list of products every year or every month, and we need to keep our reports updated. So I'm going to show you, let me bring my data here. So here we have this file, the camera CSV, and then I'll, the purpose here is to, to do our reports, to create this file cameras reports. I'm going to show you beginning and end, and then we will build the file, the cameras report. Let me bring that to you here. When we open that CSV file, this is what we get. Who of you as ever have to deal with something like that. And it's just so disappointing when we open, sometimes CSV files, we open them and they are, they behave well enough in, in Excel and they go one column for each field. Other times they don't do it. It just, just comes to us like this. So in the first row is where we have the fields listed and in usually so csv is comma separated value if you are working for example like i do in north america the separator of fields is comma because the decimal point for us is dot but if you are in europe for example where you, the, the comma is the decimal separator then you cannot use comma to separate fields because then you won't know if the comma belongs to your value or belongs to separate or is about separating fields anyways so this file comes with semicolon separating fields and we have many 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 fields here at the top and then each row is one record and we have model it's up to here and then release date is the next and so forth and we need to make sense of this information. And here is what we have and what we will be building. That looks much better, no? We have a table, we have our brands and models organized, we have the year and the price, and that's all we need because what we want to build is we want to build this pivot table with, in the filter, we have the year, and then we have models and the minimum average and maximum price. So this is our scenario. Let's bring Excel. Let's uh, start a new file here, new file. Microsoft Excel, and I'm just going to put here final report so that we know the file we are work, working on. And we want to create that same report that we had there. So data, get data, or I can use from text CSV file, or I can go from data, from file, from text CSV. It's in here. And when we do this, we get this. So we get this screen and this step may be different. If you are, if you are connecting to an Excel file, it would be different. In this case, it gives us some details here about uh, the CSV files. Usually what, com what comes here by default that Power Query already guessed is correct. So let's not worry about that. And let's just transform data because we don't want to load the data as it is. We don't need all those columns, okay? This is open. This is the Power Query editor. We have uh, Excel behind it. If I try to go to Excel, it doesn't let me. That's how Power Query is working so far. We, in fact, we don't like that. We would like to be able to go to Excel during using when we are using Power Query as well. But currently, that's how it works. It's not possible. So it opens a new editor, and this is Power Query editor. We have different tabs here at the top, and we have some of the buttons show in different tabs and uh, they may seem to be the same thing but they are not so for example this button extract is available here and also available in this other tab that says add column 
it does two different things. If you use it while you are in the add column tab, you will get a new column and keep the old one to where you are uh, applying the extract uh, function. If you are in transform, then you replace your previous column with the extraction transformation. Okay, just a small tip to keep in mind. So we have the columns here and there's already something, right? It's already something. We had that very ugly CSV file and look at that. Just like that, we didn't have to do anything. We just had to connect to, do, to it and we already have all data separate by columns. Much nicer to look at it. And here on the right, we have a, an area where Power Query records the steps that we are taking to transform our data. And recording is these applied steps is what will allow us to update our data uh, in the end. We can see that Power Query already created three steps here, source, and we can nav navigate through them. Source gives us here at the top, we have like we have in Excel, and this is where we can see the M code that Power Query is in fact generating on the back office, let's call it like that, to represent the steps, the actions that we, that we are taken, taking. So at this point he said, oh, you want to connect to this file and this is the path to the file where we can find the file. And did some other things, we're connecting to a CSV document. So it just decides the parameters for you. You don't need to worry about it, but it's good to keep your eye on the formula bar because you will get acquainted and more familiar each time with the M codes, and that's how you can you will be able to learn in the future, near future. And as doing anything else, Power Query also created two other steps: promoted headers and change type. So what is this? Promoted headers is, okay, so if we are in the source, you can see that at the top it has column one, column two, column three, just generic names for columns. And then the field names are in fact in the first column. And it was smart enough to think, oh, wait a minute, this must be the field names. So let's promote the first row to headers. So now the column have the names we wanted. And uh, he, trying to be so kind, he, uh, uh, Power Query already went ahead and changed the type. I like to leave changing type to later. So I'm going to delete this step here. We could explain why there's different situations where it can be uh, not a good idea to leave it this step there. Just accept it for now if you are not familiar with that. Usually, not always, but usually it's good to leave the defining the data type for later. Okay, so we wanted to separate the information on this column that has the brand and we want uh, to, to separate information and we are assuming that, and, and this is something that you need to explore depending on the data that you have, but in this case, the brand is always the first word and then uh, space and then the rest is about the model. So we can separate this. If you are familiar with Excel formulas, you can think what formula would I use in Excel if I had to do this in Excel? And you can do that, it's possible to do that. The great thing about it in Power Query is that you apply the same transformation to the entire column and you don't need to worry if your formulas are going down the column to where they need to be because your data sometimes has more rows than others. So you just don't need to worry about that. Okay, so let's go and separate our data. Uh, data, And I want to add a new column or I want to transform. I want to transform this column into other columns, okay? And we can split column by the limiter. There's, it's, it's also available here, uh, split column in the home tab, okay? Let's go here. Split, split column by the limiter and we will say that the space character, the leftmost the limiter, just the leftmost. We don't need uh, all, all the occurrences because otherwise I would get one, two, three columns, for example, here. We don't want that. Just two. And space, it already guessed. If it was not the space, you could choose something else from here. And then, okay. And look at that. We already got two separated columns 
this one, they were named automatically. And again, there it go, it went and changed the type. I'll take care of that later, okay? So I'll just delete that step. And here we can just come here and rename and say, this is the brand. And I can come here and rename this, or if I feel comfortable, I can here, I can look at my M code and realize that these are, this is where the new columns were uh, named automatically. So I can also change when I get comfortable. You don't have to do this right at the beginning, but after you will get comfortable and you will see that uh, you can do this as well. You can also play with the M code in the formula bar. There you go. Change type. Don't do change type. We can do that later. Okay, so now we have the brand and the model, and we just need the brand, the model. I'm going to hold down control, the year and the price. The, the year is the release date column, so hold down control, and then the price, I believe it's at the very end. And I'll just go right click, remove other columns. There's also it's also available on the ribbon you will learn where to find things in different places. The, let's go and rename the column here. This is the year. And here, there's the price. And now, finally, this is where I could change my data type. Let's pretend I forgot about it. And I say, okay, I'm going to load my data as a table. And then I'm going to create a pivot table with it. So now home, close and load to, close and load, close and load to. Let's load, uh, choose close and load to. The first time you get to choose where to you want to load your data. By default, usually Power Query comes like this, loading to a table, to a new worksheet. Let's put the table maybe here, okay. And so that's it. The, here's our data. Here's our information. If we go to that CSV file, if we go to that CSV file, let me open with the notepad and let's pretend I create a new brand here called BBB just to prove that uh, my point. I'm going to save uh, and close the file. And so what Power Query does is the next time you get new data, you just go right click and refresh. And there you go. You have the, your new information. It doesn't matter if you got more rows, less rows, you will get everything. And it just they took what? Less than a second. So you did that work once, but now you are ready to take the advantage of that work. Okay. To gather the profits of that work. Let's uh, create a pivot table here. So let's imagine uh, I want to insert a pivot table from the data in, in this table. Okay. Oh, it went to another uh, sheet. That's fine. We will move it later. And I always forget to, to choose another place to put the pivot table. And let's imagine we want the brand in our rows. And we want to filter by the year, for example. And we want to put the price. Please notice that it's giving me count of price, but I don't want the count of prices. I don't want to count the prices. I want to. If you remember, I wanted to. I wanted the minimum, average, and maximum price. So minimum. And look at what it did. All zeros. So we we need to understand what's going on there. This column to be the average. Oh, divided by zero error. And we wanted this column to be the maximum. It's not going well for us. We have the years here that we could filter from, but the pivot table, no, it's not working. So what's going on? 
it's not being able to calculate because data comes into Excel the way it was defined in Power Query. And because I deleted that step where Power Query was trying to guess the type of data for me, and then I forgot to define the data at the end, it thinks it is all text. And if it is, if this information, let me go back here, if this information is all assumed to be text, you see, for example, here, if we enlarge the columns, it's even aligned to the left, which is a sign in Excel that the number is not uh, a number, it's not being uh, interpreted as a number, is in fact text. So we just need to go back, just double click on our query that we get, uh, we have there on the right, and just let's do that, that step there. We can just come here and decide which, which data type we need for each column. The brand is text, the model is text, the year can be a whole number, and the price can be a decimal number or a currency. We can use either of these two formats. Or if the price is always a whole number, you can also do that, but usually that's not the case. So now we have this step here, change type. And now let's close and load. Let me bring my table here. Let's move the pivot table into this other sheet to put things side by side just to be easier for us. Okay. Okay, so now we have our data here. Notice that the pivot table did not refresh yet. I need to update it here. And now I was able to get my, my prices, minimum, maximum, average. We could work a little bit in the way the pivot table is being presented, the number formats and all that. But that's knowledge you, you need to have about how to work with pivot tables.